That ain't changed. But we are taking our sweet time tonight, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, you said we were going to, so we'll like your Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see if we can we can do this in 12 minutes, then. How about that? Um, what, what we are hearing is very encouraging. And yes, today is the first day of the new fiscal year, the first day of the, thir- of the fourth quarter of the calendar year, and it is the first day uh, where we have the quantum financial system completely autonomous, apart from the SWIFT system, which was kept running in parallel and essentially as a part of the uh, quantum financial system. And they wanted to run that through the end of the month, which was up until midnight last night. Now, I understand from my banking sources today that we spoke to that the QFS system was functioning perfectly today, and it was, in fact, up and running and fully operational. That was what we were looking to hear. We also heard that at 12.01, in the morning, meaning one minute after midnight last night, Eastern Time, things were supposed to kick off, if you will, and release for the uh, blessing, let's say, in in whatever form it was to release in. Well, we understood later in the day that it did kick off, but not at 12.01. It was closer to 3 in the morning this morning when everything started getting underway. Now, what happened is the the information that we're hearing, let's talk about it, first of all, in terms of Iraq. Now, Iraq yesterday morning early was to put out their new international rate on the new Iraqi dinar. We got that information uh, yesterday that, yes, in fact, that had happened, that was that was out. We thought it would happen right after morning prayer, first morning prayers, and that evidently was the case. Now, we also heard that there was an international rate established that even in country, meaning in the country of Iraq, was even a little higher than what Shabibi predicted the dinar could support in U.S. dollars. So that was encouraging. Uh, Then we also heard that the IMF and the United Nations both encouraged Iraq to go ahead and celebrate their new revalued dinar on Saturday, this coming Saturday. That's in two days, or a day and a half really from now. So they will start and celebrate in, a, in some form or fashion over there, remembering that their holy day is Friday. And so the next day, Saturday, would be their next available day to celebrate the resurgence and the, uh, the, the uh, dinar uh, revaluation. So that's a very, very positive thing. So we understand that that rate is known internationally. However, we tend not to bring something from Iraq that's known in Iraq or in the Middle East or internationally here to the U.S. until we are ready to go. And that's probably the situation now. So, we we know this. We know that, like I said, the bankers were saying that the QFS system is fully functional and operational. We know that today and tomorrow are two separate one-day holidays in China, and we understand their markets are closed uh, today, Thursday, and Friday um, for two separate holidays. I think one is sort of a harvest day, and the other day I'm not sure. They did occur. Normally they do not occur back-to-back, but because of the way the the, um, uh, calendar worked out, This time, they are literally uh, Thursday and Friday, back-to-back. 
That's interesting. Now, what is really cool is that we did catch some information about Redemption Center staffing. Uh, they were off today and off they're off tomorrow at the Redemption Centers. And so that lends us to believe that Tier 4B, at least, will not be getting started uh, today or tomorrow. Obviously, today's almost over. So uh, I believe that's the case, and I think I know why. We're going to come back to that in a minute. All right. What did happen, as far as we know, is that, and remember, this is a slow rollout. This is not something that you flip a switch and everybody gets paid. That's not how it's working. So far, the small groups of individuals, the individual uh, private, private, as they call them, that are going in and doing exchanges and are still doing it even now, even today, even yesterday, they are getting what's called pocket money or walking around money. Okay? Now, some of this used to be called emergency funds, healing funds, travel funds. It's really walking around money. Now, it's more than you would put in your pocket. So it's not pocket money. But it amounts to probably a low of $50,000 between fifty and 150000 it's it's more than you know pocket change. It's walking around money, but it's not the big money. It's not the mother load. It's not you know getting access to billions and trillions of dollars. All right. So what has happened is these people that I know of five situations, four in groups and one individual that's been paid this walking around money. And they've been told to come back or that on a certain date, they would be able to have greater access to those funds. More like maybe not the entire mother load, but much, much more access to funds. People that are doing these exchanges now, and there are some that are happening, uh, they are not being SKR'd safekeeping receipt. They're not being SKR, but they are getting more than pocket than walking around money. And they're also, uh, in my opinion, they're getting an account that they can see the balance, but they do not have access, but to only so much of that money. In other words, there's a hold on the larger balance, but they do have access to what we're calling walking around money somewhere between fifty and say $150,000. And that's been the rule of thumb for uh, many of these small groups and individuals we call. Some of them are whales and some of them are just privates. They're not whales. They're not even close to whales. They're just people uh, that got brought in, right place, right time, that kind of thing. Okay? Now, so what is happening now, besides that, is that as a result of today being the first day of the new fiscal year, we're looking for uh, the hydration of some major accounts and the start of the core group and what we're terming uh, Tier 4A. We know that the, out west, the leader out west has been congratulated. We know that they are getting ready to start uh, paying out. And there are 27 different groups that would be constituted under, under the admiral or other individual, individuals that could be based out west. And we also know there are a number of adjudicated settlements that need to be uh, paid out. Now, what's happening is that was supposed to start today and may have, in fact, started already in those, in those notifications. And when I say notification, picture this. 
a notification comes to you by email or in some cases a phone call that says, okay, your account with such and such a bank has been used. Mm -hmm. Now, when they are notified like that, and believe me, that's not what the, what the notification is going to say. That's my uh, verbiage of what it could say something similar to that. When they get those notifications, the theory is that when they do get access to that account, which they usually have to go to the bank to get access, okay, that those funds are there accessible to some extent, like the walking around money, okay, to a smaller extent, not the full other load, even for those groups, even for those individuals in those groups. Okay? I do not believe that Treasury wants all of that liquidity to be released all at once. They won't let that happen. And that's why everything from Tier 1, 2, 3, and now let's call it 4A that is about to get started, if it hasn't already started by now, they will get walking around money. And then a little bit later, what's going to happen, here is the redefinition of the shotgun start. You ready? Here's the redefinition of it. The shotgun start will essentially mean when we go into the redemption centers and we get access to our funds, which should be 100% of our currency exchange, not the ZIM, that's a ZIM bond redemption. But if you have currency, Dinar, Dong, Rupia, uh, Rial, Afghani, etc. You should get access to those to the to the exchange amount in U.S. dollars that same day. You should have access to that. The Zim is a different animal, as you know, because of the high value, and it will be leached out in amounts. Okay, so much, and we, that's why we told you, you know about the first 90 days. How much do you need for the first 90 days? Okay? We told you that you'd be able to access up to, up to, if you're a ZIM holder, up to $500 million in the first 90 days. Okay? Now, here's the point. This is going to roll out for these various groups with individual notifications to the group members and subsequent availability of funds as they go in and achieve that, that should happen between today or tonight, let's call it, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and maybe they will be done on Monday. It may take us all the way through Monday. That's about a four or five day rollout, at least four days rollout for the groups. Now, the shotgun start is defined as those groups being a, let's call it Tier 4A, which is where we put all of the Admiral's groups. Let's say Tier 4A gets notified and they have some access to what I'm calling walking around money. When we get started with our appointments and exchanges, that's when they get a greater amount and that's when we get a greater amount when we actually do our exchange. That is the only thing that is remotely a shotgun start. That's really the redefinition of the term for this purpose. Okay? Now, what else can we say about the timing? We know that Redemption Center staff is off today and tomorrow, so Thursday and Friday. We know that their schedule is to start Tuesday morning early and go all the way through until late, late on the night of the 14th. So that's the 6th through the 14th with, guess what, Tier 5, John Q. Public starting on the 15th, which is two weeks from today. And they would take the public now, not us, the 
Republic would start, Pier 5 would start from the 15th and go all the way through the 1st of November. So there's your new public dates, 15th of October through November 1st. We start ostensibly based on the information that I'm getting Tuesday morning, or no, let's not say morning, Tuesday, and go through the 14th. That would give us plenty of time to get our exchanges done at the Redemption Center and Tier 1 banks, some of which are connected to Redemption Centers. Now, that is the over and under on pretty much where we are right now. Now, that gives you a little bit of time, ostensibly, to be prepared and get prepared for your presentation. To make, would you be one who would be interested? Are you looking forward to getting the very best possible rate that you can get, the very best possible presentation that you can offer? 